Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. With this video, I have come to unravel the mysteries behind roller coasters and learn about physics put into this amusement park ride. In roller coasters, a machine is required to lift the roller coaster to the highest point in the ride. An object sitting still at the top of a hill has stored energy due to its position. So, at the top of a hill, coaster possesses a large quantity of potential energy. As the train climbs up the lift hill, it builds up its potential energy. This is the energy due to the position and is dependent on mass and height of the object. As the train climbs higher and higher, the more potential energy get added because height is directly proportional to potential energy. When the train reaches the top of the first drop, train has enormous amount of potential energy ready to be used and once there's enough potential energy, the fun begins. As the train heads down the first drop, the force of gravity accelerates the train back to the ground. With such a large amount of potential energy, this energy needs to be utilized somewhere. Here comes the law of conservation of energy that states that energy is neither created nor be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. Now that stored potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy possessed by any body due to its motion and is depend upon mass and speed of the object. At the bottom surface of the first drop, it reaches its fastest speed and the more speed of an object has more kinetic energy because speed and kinetic energy are directly proportional to each other. As it climbs up the second hill, it begins to slow down as the force of gravity acts against the man. The same as you jump into the air, you fall back to the ground. The train begins to travel slower and kinetic energy turns back to potential energy. Once the train reaches the top of the second hill, it is now traveling very slowly. Because according to Newton's first law of motion, an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless another force acts against it. Here, wind resistance and friction caused by the wheels are the forces that work to slow down the train. So toward the end of the ride, the hills tend to be lower because the coaster has less energy to get up them. This pattern of energy continues through the rest of the ride. Friends, now let me summarize the thrilling roller coaster rides physics using pie chart, which will represent the relative amounts of potential and kinetic energy. It does not include energy loss from friction. As the ride begins, at first point, coaster has maximum potential energy ready to be utilized. The higher the hill, the coaster is coming down, the more kinetic energy is available to push the coaster up the next hill and the faster the coaster will move. Centripetal force provided by track pushing against coaster allow it to loop the loop. You can clearly see the transformation of one form of energy into another. At top, potential energy is maximum while kinetic energy is negligible. And at bottom surface, kinetic energy becomes maximum and potential energy becomes zero. Each loop is slightly lower than the previous one because the car loses energy as it goes. Coaster has less energy at the end of the ride than at the start due to the friction and air resistance. And friends, our life is like a roller coaster. It has its ups and downs, but it's your choice to scream or enjoy the ride. Just be positive. Also, now the next time you ride or see a roller coaster, whether just going up and down hills or spiraling through turns, you will know a little more about how physics is turned into fun. Happy learning!